Hello viewer and welcome to the e-learning classroom. So today we want to look at the Hostans experiment uh, and also we'll mention something on Amphia's rule. So if you look at the setup we have here, we have the setup uh, for the Hostans experiment whereby we have the battery, uh, these are the cells here. We also have a rail start here, we have a rail start here. Then we have uh, the two uh, compass, the magnetic compasses. We have compass A and compass B. And then we also have a switch. The switch is here. We have also included the ammeter so that we can observe uh, how much current is flowing. So, and then for this setup, so we want to look at three, uh, three uh, setups here. When we close the switch, what happens to the deflections of the uh, magnetic compasses and also the direction. What direction do they deflect on? If you look at uh, the two compasses A and B, one, A is on top of the wire. That's why you cannot see the wire because the wire is below uh, the compass A. Then for B, the wire is above the wire is above the compass, that is why you can see the wire in the diagram. So we want to know what is the difference in terms of deflections. We'll also interchange the terminals and see the deflections. And also from there, we'll also vary the current using the variable resistor or the raw start. And then we'll also be able to observe what is happening. So uh, let me first cross the switch. I have the switch here. I want you to observe the two the two compasses how they deflect and the direction so you can see the deflection the, the ammeter is also deflecting indicating some flow of current maybe I can remove again see it is now back to zero it's now back to zero so let me close the switch again Look at that, the deflection of uh, the, two, the two terminals. So from there now, from there now, I want us to see if I interchange the terminals, the terminals of the battery. Let me now interchange this one, this side now, this other one, this side now. Look at the difference in deflection now. The ammeter is also indicating current is flowing in the opposite direction. Let me revert back to the normal, the normal arrangement. I want you to observe the deflection. You can see that the deflection of the, the two, how the two are deflecting. Uh, let me ensure this one is more closer because it seems the wire is a bit far. I want you to observe the, the deflection when I remove the switch, when I revert back the switch. So from there also, I can also vary the current. Remember this deflection is what we have here on observation. North Pole has gone to the lower side. You can see it here. North Pole has gone to the upper side. You can see it also here. So let me also vary the current using the variable resistor. You can observe the ammeter and the deflections. Look at the deflections. You can see that. Let me increase the current back. You see that? You see that? Hope you are able to see that, viewers. So that is now uh, the Oxton's experiment, where he studied the relationship between the magnetic field of the compass and also the magnetic uh, field of the a wire that is carrying the current. So with this now, uh, we'll be able to know the observations that we are making, first of all, uh, the first magnet is uh, North Pole is deflecting to this to the lower side. How do we determine that? 
So how are we able to determine that? So we have what we call the Ampere's Rule. The Ampere's Rule, which states that if one imagines to be swimming along a wire in the direction of the current and facing the compass needle, then the north pole of the needle will be deflected towards the swimmer's left hand. By that we are saying, uh, for example, let's consider B here. Let's consider B here. So we, you are swimming along the wire and also in the direction of the current. And as you are swimming, you are facing, your face should be towards the compass. Your face uh, should be towards the compass. So that means you are facing downwards because the compass is below the wire and you are also swimming towards the right because the, well, the current is flowing from uh, positive to negative towards the right. So that means now the left hand will be on the upper side and that's why you see B deflecting on the upper side. For A, you are swimming upside down. You are still going towards the right from A to B but, it's, but this time around your face is up once. You are because the, the compass is above the wire, that means now uh, the left hand will be on the lower side and that's why you see the north pole deflecting to the lower side. So that is the swimmer's row and uh, he is able now to determine the side where the deflection of the, the compass uh, goes. And it's also important to note that the direction of the current is also very important in determining the deflection, the side where the deflection occurs. That is why when we interchange the terminals, the deflection now takes the opposite sides. And then you also realize that when you increase the current, the deflection also increases. And when you decrease the current, the deflection also decreases. So with that now, we can also look at uh, four other rules. So let's start with the Maxwell's right hand grip rule. Maxwell's uh, right hand grip rule. And this rule states that if a conductor carrying current, if a conductor carrying current is grasped in the right hand with the thumb pointing along the wire in the direction of the conventional current, the fingers will encircle the conductor in the direction of the magnetic field. In other words, we are saying, uh, let's say this is the wire carrying current. Then you hold, you grasp with the right hand, you grasp the wire with the right hand, the thumb pointing the current, this is the thumb pointing the current, then these fingers will indicate the magnetic field lines. This wire is carrying current in the upward direction. So let's look at the field lines there. So we have these field lines like this. So for the right hand grip row, the fingers should be, uh, the, the thumb is pointing current, so the fingers are like this. So that means this one is rising up here, and this one is dropping down there. Then we can also consider this other one. So we have the, the few lines like this, and that means uh, if you look at the, the few lines, current is like this, so that means... Uh, the field lines are now the opposite. We have the opposite here. That is the opposite of what we had initially. Then lastly, we have this one. That is current down. So the field lines are like this. Current down. So like this. The thumb pointing current. So the field lines are like this. And this other one is like this. Lastly, we have this one. Current out current out, so we have the few lines like this. So this one is current out, so the thumb is like this, the fingers like this. That means it's rising up here and dropping this other side. So those are the few lines for the four wires that are carrying currents. Maxwell's uh, corkscrew row that states that if a right-handed screw is driven forward in the direction of the conventional current, then the direction of the rotation of the screw is the direction of the field lines. By that we are saying, let's say this is a screw. You can see the screw here. And then for this screw, let's say you are driving the screw 
towards the current. If current is going like this in the wire, you are driving towards the current, that means you'll be rotating it like this. And that means the fuel lines will flow in that particular direction. The direction of rotation of the screw will also be representing the direction of the fuel lines. So we can also look at the solenoid as we finalize now, the solenoid. So this is the solenoid we have. So for the solenoid, we want to know what is the polarity of A and the polarity of B. So and by that what we do, to determine the polarity, what we do first of all, we can apply the right hand grip rule, but this time round for, uh, for a solenoid. So what we do, uh, it is just that if a coil carrying current is held in the right hand, such that the fingers encircle the loops while pointing in the direction of the current flow, the thumb points in the direction of the north pole. In other words, for example, we can complete the current flow here from positive to negative. That means it will be rising here, dropping, 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 everywhere. This one is dropping everywhere. And then it comes back to negative terminal. So we have the direction of the current there. So we are holding this with our right hand, but this time round the fingers are indicating current and the thumb will point north pole. So what we do there, so what we do there now, I'll, I'll hold it like this. Because the current is uh, flowing like this, so that means North Pole is at B. So B represents North Pole. A represents South Pole. B represents North Pole. A represents South Pole. We can also apply the Croc rule to determine that. And the Croc rule states that if the direction of the current in the coil as observed from hand is clockwise, this hand is South Pole. And if the current is anti-clockwise, the hand becomes a north pole. So for example, if you look at B, assuming this is a solenoid, B, current is flowing like this at B, the last coil. Because uh, rising on the inner side, dropping on this side, and that one is anti-clockwise, which we are saying anti-clockwise is north pole. And then A, we hold it like this. So this one is rising here and dropping here. And this one is clockwise, which is south pole. So you realize whether you work with the crock rule or right hand grip rule, you still get the same thing. So uh, that's all about the host hands experiment in terms of uh, correlation between the magnetic field lines. Remember the key thing here is to understand how the the, the magnetic compasses are deflected in uh, when they are under the wire and when they are above the wire that is carrying the current. And also this, the magnitude of the deflections uh, depending with the amount of current flowing. So that marks the end of our today's session. Uh, let's uh, see you in the next uh, video.